Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Ash on Comics, I'm Ash, and uh, this is today's comic. What the heck is it? Well, you already know because YouTube forces me to put a title on my video. Um, I swear to God, dogs, really, it's killing me. Um, this is the third video that I've recorded today. I do a lot of videos in bulk, and I swear, the dogs, they don't do anything. In fact, uh, I recorded in order um, my Heroes in Crisis, then I do the JL8 video, and I do this. And I literally back to back, and it's like every time I start the video, it's like they go up, gotta have some water. And I go sit down, edit the videos, don't do anything, they're quiet. It's just so weird, it's like they wanna get in the limelight. So, anyways, that being said, you know what this is because I have to title my videos. Uh, I got my Jawbreakers book about a month ago, I wanna say, and um, was, I was a little unhappy with it. I was sad, S-A-A-D, as Zach would put it. It was a mostly good condition. That was a, kind of the heartbreaking thing because I felt really bad. Like if the book was just trashed, I, could, I would have felt like way better sending him, you know, Zach, my book's trash, give me a new one. But this one was like pretty good condition, you know, not, not really near mint, like very fine, you know, like, but... I bought it as a collector's item, as a keepsake. Like I, and so like I thought about it for a week. I, I talked about it in a video. And then I listened to Zach's videos and he's like, look, the, the, the vendor's gonna pay for this. You just sent, you know, I was like, all right, well, I'll just send Zach an email and, and send the pictures and let him decide whether he wants to send a book or not. Like, um, and I kind of explained to you what I just did. And I got this today. And look, it's in a Gemini mailer. So, kudos to Zach, first of all. I don't know if you're ever going to watch this video, Zach, but thank you for being an upstanding businessman and someone who's true to your fans. And I would not have really probably even submitted this to you if it would come out of your pocket. But since you said uh, the, uh, what your fulfillment company was paying for stuff, like I was like, all right. And I really appreciate you making good. And I'm sorry for this fiasco that you had to go through um, and everything. Not too sorry because, hey, you've been really successful and I wish you much more success in the future. And I want to tell you, yours is the only book that I've backed because I wasn't backing just a book. I don't believe in paying for $25 comic books. Um, I really don't. And if you're hearing this, consider this for the future because... I can't, I can't be bang, buying $25 comic books. As much as I love you and as much as I want you to succeed, it's just not right. And this is a 20, you know, it's, oh, it's a graphic novel. Well, I mean, it was marketed as like a 50 page book or something like that. And we got the extras because of the stretch goals. But what if we didn't hit the stretch goals? It would have been like a 50 page book. And I had a problem paying 10 bucks for Detective Comics 1000 when, when action was $7.99. Comics are too expensive. They need to come down. Alternate is the right price point. I know indie comics can't necessarily get those printing costs, so I'm willing to pay a dollar or two more, but not $25, not $25 plus $10 shipping. Like, it's just, you know, there might be a boutique market, as Ethan likes to say, for these books, and there might be people with a lot of disposable income that are willing to do that. That's not me, and that's not the bulk of the industry. And I have to say, and I think you'll probably agree with me, that's not what comics were ever designed to appeal to. They were never designed to appeal to the higher income disposable. They're just, kids aren't spending $35 on comics. They need to be $1.50, two bucks. They need to be like, hey, I got some change in my pocket. I'm in 7-Eleven. Hey, look at this really cool comic. And I backed your book, Zach, my boy, for one, for, well, two reasons. I mean, I, I, you, you got me into comics. Um, or Not into comics. I was a big fan of comics back in the 80s and 90s when you were but you rekindled my passion. I loved that you, you, I found you because you were roasting the SJWs and making fun of all the problems of the comic book industry, which was keeping me out. But then as I listened to you and your passion and you, you saw good in the comic book industry and you weren't just posting like about all the shit, you found the diamonds in the rough and you would occasionally be like, oh, this book's actually really good. And, and I was like, wow. And I got back into comics right around those, um, White Knight. And White Knight sold me back and I was like wow and that um, Sean Gordon Murphy is the hottest shit since Frank Miller hit the scene back uh, you know what the early 80s with the Daredevil run 
or maybe it was the late 70s. Um, it's, I, anyways, I'm back into comics. You got me in there. And so that's why I backed you. But the second reason, number reason I actually spent money is because you were trying to put this as a floppy into comic book stores. I wanted to see these on the shelf. I wanted to go in and see Antarctic Press, you know, Jawbreakers number one, Jawbreakers number two, Jawbreakers number three, month after month, or even bi-monthly. You know, I understand that you're not a, you know, a full-time pro and maybe you don't want to put out that volume. Six comics a month, I know you could do that, you know, in a year, you know, or six comics a year. Uh, just getting those floppies, just seeing them on the shelf, being part of the the comic environment and the public seeing it, not just being limited to the Indiegogo uh, niche market, um, being part of the conversation and helping other comic companies like you know Antarctic Press sell comics that aren't SJW agenda. And I know, of course, the Mark Wade thing. I mean, no one needs to educate you on that. You're front and center. And I hope you sue the shit out of Mark Wade, and I hope you don't settle out of court and let this thing get swept under the rug. Um, I know you need to recoup the damages um, of his interference, but part of what you're doing and part of the reason a lot of people donated money to your crowdfunding for this, the lawsuit, is to, this is a lawsuit that's for, you know, not just for you, but for the industry. And uh, I hope it goes all the way and he gets fleeced. Not fleeced, but you know, justice is served. That's what I hope. So, you send me this book, and Gemini Miller, I wanted to unbox it, see the difference. Now, I did the unboxing of the original book, and everyone knows how bad that was shipped. Look at this. Now we got a Gemini Mailer with Zach. He, he put it in a padded envelope inside the Gemini Mailer, which I, I opened up ahead because it normally opened cutting stuff on camera and I realized, oh, I have a tripod after the fact. <laughs> but, uh, normally, I was like, I'm gonna do this one-handed, but now I have to cut this. So, I've gotta be extra careful, feel where the book is, and uh, uh, this is this is worrying me. I don't want to cut the book. There we go. So, padded envelope inside Gemini Mailer, inside cardboard protection, front and back, with shrink wrap. Now, anyone who's watching this that's not Zach, you have no room to say shit about this guy at all. <laughs> it's, this guy, oh, Zach, you're comic book, you're fleecing your fans and you're late on your book, blah, 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 bullshit. Bullshit. Okay, crowdfunding campaigns, number one, are notoriously late. Uh, by far, the mass percentages of all crowdfunding campaigns run late. Always. There's some complication, some unforeseen circumstance, something happens, some storm comes in, Chinese New Year, whatever. Something causes things to be late, especially when it's someone's first campaign. There are people right now, <clears throat> uh, Richard Pace, that are like five years overdue that are just literally ripping out. Zoe Quinn is never three years, never delivered to her fans. Zach was a couple months late and he shipped out his books and the fulfillment center he used kind of cheated on him. Like took the, sh the shortcut route, had some problems and Zach immediately jumped on it. And look at this, look at this care that he takes to deliver his book. Um, now I gotta now I gotta try to cut through this plastic. Fortunately, this um, having this jeez, oh the cardboard on the outside of the book allows me to kind of scrape at the knife to try to cut the plastic a little bit so I can rip without having to worry about cutting into the book. I don't know if Zach intended that way or what, but bravo on that. So I would have had to been way more careful opening this otherwise. So here we go. And now everyone has actually seen the book by now, but I will show 
and it is in fantastic condition. And I am super pleased. Um, Zach has delivered a fantastic product. Um, I haven't read the book yet because I don't really should because I have that other the, the bad copy to read, which I think I'm going to donate maybe. Um, but I'm really pleased, Zach. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything that you've done for comics and comics fans. Thank you for making a good book. Thank you for delivering on your promise on your campaign. Um, you you are whether you whether you understand this or not, Zach. You are a voice of the people. I know you don't think of yourself as a leader uh, of Comicsgate or anything like that. Um, and that's fine. Like Comicsgate is sort of this uh, organic thing and it's an idea and it really doesn't need to be a leader, but you are a leader of sorts and you inspire people. And I think it's because of just being you, uh, having that integrity and you are everything that you like kind of say you are. You don't pretend to be anything. You're just a fan who loves comics, hates when things are done bad. You call a spade a spade, but you're always fair to give credit where credit's due. And you have a genuine love for the hobby, which is what the rest of us, the rest of us that spend our hard-earned money on books like this, but also books from the industry, you know, we love comics. You get it, and you have a way of putting it that resonates to other people and um, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I hope you do get a chance to watch this video. Um, you inspired me to make my own videos and they're not, it's not as good as yours. Um, but you know, I just want to talk about comics and anyways, I'm thrilled. Much success. I cannot wait for your next book. I'll see if I'll, I'll see if I'll back it. Like I said, I can't afford all these books. But I, I'm happy. You, you've 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 really earned my patronage for another book because of this. Like it's over. I'm over the moon at how you've handled the problem. Like there was a problem, and you did everything right in fixing it. So bravo, Zach. Um, I know it's we're supposed to be celebrating Batman, but I'm now I'm also celebrating Jawbreakers. So everyone, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.